Hello, my name is Hannes Reinecke. Some of you might know me, some don't. Um, I'm working for SUSE, as you can see there, um, for, well, like an eternity, about what, nearly 20 years now. And um, I've been involved with Linux, well, even longer than that. So um, the first Linux version I started off was, I guess, 1.15, 0 1.05 or something, back in them days, really that old. Anyway, and since then I've been active in various things regarded with, uh, regarding Linux. Um, recently I've been involved with storage and NVMe in particular. And this now is one of the, well, one of my pet projects, really, which finally came to life, namely the quest for large pages. So, what is it? Why do we do it? So, um, when you do I.O., I.O. Is, in is inevitably being done in larger chunks called blocks. These blocks are currently limited by the a hardware page size of the Linux kernel, which is typically 4K on an x86 box. And that is also, this page size limitation is also implicitly assumed by various drivers and subsystems. However, um, that's not the end of the world. Some systems and or applications actually might benefit from larger pages. There are certain databases which really would like to talk in 16K increments because that's how the database is organized internally. Also, some hardware really would benefit if we could move to larger, page, uh, larger sizes, larger block sizes, because then the overhead internally in the drives wouldn't be that large, wouldn't be that heavy, and the entire drive will become, well, more efficient and cheaper. So, why do we even have that? I mean, couldn't we just say, write this data, go? Well, yeah, hmm, sort of. The problem is that you can't just do atomic I.O. There is no single assembly instruction, do I.O. on these bytes. You always have to have several instructions, setting up I.O., transferring the data, getting back the results, and so on and so forth. This is obviously, always increase the latency for each and every I.O. you do. So what you're trying to do is to minimize the amount of I.O., meaning the actual number of I.O., not so much the size of the I.O., but the number of the I.O. And then in the question is right, how much I.O. is the best ratio? How much data should I transfer? What should I do here? There had been quite some bit of experimentation back in the early days. Um, if anyone here is familiar with mainframes, mainframes still have the concept of variable block sizes for their drives, which I found very interesting. So you have to decide on each and every uh, you do, right, what, what might be the block size here? Interesting. And um, there had been a lot of experimentation going on, and there had been researchers at Berkeley, of course, as usual, who eventually figured that, well, 512 gives you a good ratio between the amount of data you store, which typically tend to be very small, and the overhead you would incur by um, um, moving to larger blocks. So, but then again, this was 20 years ago. But mm, we stuck with it and we still keep it that way for now. Okay, that's the I.O. Now going to the page size. Why do I talk about page size and whatnot? So the thing is that the CPU architecture has a memory management unit. And that has some hardware-assisted things allowing you to tell whether a given memory area is dirty or not, i.e. whether it need to be reread from disk to get the actual contents. So that's actually hardware-assisted. And as it's hardware assisted, it can only operate in, in different sizes. So you can't just pick an arbitrary size, but the size which you can choose is actually given by the hardware. So say for x86, you have a choice of 4K, 2 max, and I think 2 gigs is the next increment which you can do. And that's it, nothing in between. 
For other architectures like PowerPC or ARM, you have a bit more flexibility, like there are still some and power systems or even ARM systems out there which use a 16K page size. But this is just because the hardware supports it. You couldn't do that on an x86. And so for Linux, we have this page size compile time setting, which tells the compiler and the entire source code, all right, the page size is now that value. So as we want to be compatible with other architectures, the common setting here really is 4K for basically throughout the board. I mean, it is certainly for SUSE. I guess it's the same for RHEL, and so that's basically a common setting which we have. But still, page size typically means, right, okay, that is the unit with which the memory management works. So now we have the memory management walk, uh, talking in, for, uh, in page size increments, but as I already mentioned, well, we need to or might need to refresh the data back from disk and into the memory and from memory onto disk. The thing which does that is called the page cache with greetings to Willy. So, and, um, so that's the buffered I.O. because it's, well, we are not writing directly to disk, but rather buffer the I.O. in the page cache which is also working on memory pages. So guess what? Indeed, it's also working in 4K pages increments. And um, so there's the, um, when you work with the memory pages, there's a hardware setting telling you, right, this page is dirty and needs to be refreshed. That then triggers the, uh, the, uh, the IO to refresh, the, basically to read in the page contents back into the memory management. And um, so this will typically be done on page size increments. You could transfer several pages, but then clearly all of these pages would have to be marked as dirty such that the hardware logic behind it can work. And so if we had units which are larger than pages, then we would need to treat them as a single unit. And that is called a folio in Linux. And that is the, oh, hang on, are we there yet? So, coming back to the folios later. So, and then we have a page just telling the block layer, right, okay, I want to do I.O. As already mentioned, we have two types. That's the buffered I.O. and the direct I.O. For direct I.O., it's trivial. That's basically user space telling us, transfer this data now. All right, and you do that. So nothing really you can do because user space already tells you how the I.O. should be laying, uh, laid out. For buffered I.O., it's different because that's from the file system. And the file system typically just cares about the amount of data. It doesn't really care how you need to organize your data internally. It doesn't really care. And so to do that, there are actually several interfaces how you could do I.O. The primary one or the original one is called buffer heads. Then there's a successor or an, auto, an underlying structure called the struct bio. And then there's a thing called IO map. Again, coming back to that. But in order to do so, do so such that we can transfer larger, larger, larger blocks, we need to convert the page cache to folios. Now there it is. I always waited for this slide. I always, as soon as I heard this folio thing, I said, oh, I need to have a slide with the first folio. Right. I thought, okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> he got it. Oh, brilliant. At least one. Very good. Okay. So, folios. Um, folios are, well, basically a common structure for a set of pages. Because as it so happens, we are not only having a normal page the memory management also knows of other types. There are things called compound pages, which essentially is an array of pages, and there are things called huge pages, which is an improvement from, well, several years ago. Initially, initially it was a separate file system, and then it got uh, into something more flexible, which is called transparent huge pages, THP. Some of you might have heard of that one or seen it somewhere written in LWN. Um, so, and each of these has their own peculiar quirk, 
which makes it quite odd because all of them could be addressed via a struct page. So if you have a struct page, you really have to know, is it a struct page or maybe something else? Um, we got into some really funny issues there with um, when trying to transfer pages down to the drives. Um, that's, say, the send page OK one, because that tells us, right, is this really a page or do I need to do something else? And so uh, Matthew Wilcox invented a structure called Folio, which is basically just an overarching type for all of these distinct things. So um, all of these various types can be addressed via a struct folio. The important bits in our case here is that the folio can be larger than a page, which is nice, because that is precisely what we need if we want to transfer larger blocks, because then we can identify one of these large blocks, a blocks with a folio. That would work. And with that, we can do, in theory, large block I.O. However, that would require us to, well, convert the page cache, at the very least, but more likely even the memory management, over to folios. That was first proposed by Matthew Wilcox in 2020 and had been a prominent talk for the Linux Storage and File System Conference ever since. And it, off you could imagine, had lots and lots of controversial discussions. At one point, someone even refusing to, to merge it at all, because why would you need that? Well, yeah, we do. And it's an ongoing work. So this is just a, struct, a simple counter for the number of um, invocations of struct page and the number of um, instances of struct folio. As you can see, well, we have a long way to go. So this is ongoing work. We will get there eventually, but we are certainly not there yet. So buffered I.O. What do we do? Uh, how do we do buffered I.O.? So this now is, some of you might know, that's the diagram of the Linux storage stack, as you can see. And the really depressing thing is we are just dealing with this little gray rectangle in the upper right corner. So that's the area we are looking at. All of the remaining things are none of our concern. So, buffer heads. Buffer heads are the original structure present since 0 0.01, meaning the very first instance of Linux. And that essentially is a rep representation of a sector, of a disk sector. It is 512 bytes, or assumption is 512 bytes, uh, bytes. It's linked to a page, and there's internal caching, the famous buffer cache, which, to, uh, which well, saves on doing I.O. for each and every access to the buffer heads themselves. These are still in use by, by most file systems, actually. And uh, there is also a pseudo file system for the block device, which is also using buffer heads. And the page cache itself was only impl implemented later because, well, the buffer heads did their own, own buffering. And just for the fun of it, this is the actual structure of the buffer heads. And so, as you can see, yeah, it is boo quite something to store in. And the question really is, do we need all of that or can't we have something simpler? And that's what ended up to become the bio or basic I.O. structure. This was invented by Jens Axbo back for 2.5, which is basically the basic I.O. structure for the device drivers themselves. So this allows you to do vectorized I.O., meaning you can have an array of pages attached to a single bio and you can root and reroute the BIOS to devices as you see fit. Um, device mapper is the example because that's preci doing precisely that, rerouting, reformatting BIOS just to make whatever it like, uh, wants to do, RAID or VDO or something, you name it. And that's actually the primary structure for the block layer. And the buffer hats are nowadays implemented on top of struct BIO. So the buffer heads will be converted into a bio, and then that will be sending out the actual I.O. And the bios themselves are used by quite some file systems, 
AFS, for example, others, um, such that they don't need, uh, they, those file systems won't be using buffer heads, but BIOS directly. And then there's IOMAP, as I said, or Christoph Helwig going crazy. Uh, as he is wont to do, he's not here, can we not record this? Sorry. Um, he got fed up with all these various structures and structures for I.O. and invented his own thing called I.O. map, which is, well, the modern interface, which thankfully already operates in folios. And thus, this basically just does away with all the intermediate structures. It just provides a way how a file system can tell the block layer how the I.O. should be mapped. And then it's up to the block layer to map it to lay it out correctly. Some file systems have already been converted, and that has obviously callbacks directly into the page cache to, to enable it to work with the page cache. Some file systems have already been converted, most notably XFS, ButterFS, and SonFS. Someone knows about that. So for these, clearly nothing needs to be done. But documentation of that, hmm, there must be some. Only it's hard to come by and not very accurate, uh, accurate because that interface keeps on changing. I mean, it is under active development, so every new release you will find new features which are hmm, not really that well documented. So, what do we need to do to actually get to the point of doing large blocks? This is just for fun of it, just googled a large block and said, yeah, it's an area with more than 500, 500 square meters. Mm, not quite what we want. Anyway, so there is this long-standing trend in the storage community that buffer heads must, must die. Because reasoning is that it's an ancient structure and really um, it's a legacy interface and everyone should be converted over to StructBio or to IOMAP. And then there is this quote from Monday, I guess, or Friday. Um, you can read it for yourself. Um, I'm not sure whether I can read it without violating any code. And so um, maybe this direction is not what we should pursue, not if we want to make any, uh, want to have Linux to merge that code. So what can we do? So, yeah, conversion to folders is nice, but really only affects the page cache and the memory management subsystem is not so really, hmm. So we need to do more there. And the problem is that buffer hats actually assumes that I.O. will be done in smaller instances or increments than the page size. Hmm. We now have the opposite. We now have larger increments than the struct uh, stru page. So several routes which you could take. One is convert to IOMAP, then we could obviously just switch it off, just don't use it and compile everything out which does, it does use it, or could try to update things. So convert to IOMAP. In an ideal world, that's what we would, would want to do, because IOMAP is the modern interface and it's actually quite a nice interface. I mean, still Christoph Helwig, he does, he do have nice, uh, does have nice ideas and workable ideas, it just he also has complex ideas. So. Some file systems have already been converted, so in an ideal world, we would convert all file systems to it. Um, so if someone has followed the discussions on the kernel summit mailing list for the next maintainer summit, there is a very long and lively discussion what we should be doing for legacy file systems, because, well, these are legacy file systems. And the problem with that is, well, there is not so much an active maintainer for it because, well, he has long gone if, it ever, if he had ever existed. Sorry about using the pronoun he. Um, I will be inserting the proper gender correct forms in the recording. Um, so, and of course, the documentation of these file systems is hard to come by if it ever existed most of the legacy, really, especially the old legacy file systems, are actually reverse engineered by what they have seen on the, on the disk themselves without any idea why it had been there. So how would you go about and uh, convert these? That really is a hard thing to do. And of course, you would need to have a proper documentation via OMAP to 
enable other developers who are not that familiar with IOMAP to actually do it. So, hmm, possibly not the way we could be or should be going. So, of course, we could also just say, all right, whenever there's a buffer head, just compile it out. There is a patch set from, again, Christoph Helbig, which did exactly that. So, you could just delay, disable all of this, because, and then trivially, both buffer heads won't be used anymore, and there's no discussions to be had. This patch actually went in in 6.5, so with 6.5, you, um, can, well, you can't actually switch it off. But if you compile out all file systems which use buffer heads, buffer heads will be switched off implicitly. So, um, hmm. That is a bit of an odd interface, but yeah, it is backwards compatible. It's just not only, it's really hard to get there. And um, the interesting thing is that some files which actually are in common use, like FAT or X3, will then no longer work because they won't be compiled in, because they haven't been converted. And of course, there's always the possibility to update buffer hats. This was actually the direction suggested by Joseph Bacic back, uh, Bacic, um, less, uh, back in the, at the last LFS in Vancouver. So, well, you could just convert the whole thing, convert to folios, and then see that, it, that you get rid of the assumption that they all would need to be smaller than the page size, but also could be larger than the page size. So, hmm, it could be quite trivial, because hmm, in an ideal world, it's already coded that way, that everything works, or it could be a complete nightmare that this assumption that you always will have I.O. which is smaller than the page is basically implicitly coded all over the code, and you, ha you would have to do a full audit of everything. So or originally, when I, when I heard about that, I said, mm, that is not the direction I would have wanted to go. Hmm. And of course, there's the Sitom Ketom Kenzio, that buffer heads and so on. So, later that, night, uh, that day, I've been sitting at the bar after having looked at the code and said, oh God, that's a complete nightmare. How, is, how on earth is someone supposed to convert it? And what, what are doing buffer heads at all? Why do we even have that? Complaining bitter, bitterly to my neighbor. Only to figure out later that this was actually Andrew Morton who said, well, um, back in the day when I wrote it, it was quite good and it still works, doesn't it? So, hmm, but thank God, not something which a good drink wouldn't fix afterwards. So, yes, um, but then again, it really made me reconsider maybe Joseph was right after all. But... If you're updating buffer heads, you get, all, uh, get into all these, well, grubby details which you really wouldn't have wanted to thought about earlier on. Like, there's a void pointer attached to the, bar, uh, to the struct page, which, well, it's a void pointer. And that points to the buffer head, if using buffer heads. If using IOMAP, it points to the IOMAP structure. So, hmm, and then, figuring out that you're actually running in the page cache, meaning that this page is shared by everyone attaching this, uh, um, accessing this very same page. It really makes a difference whether you're talking to buffer heads or IOMAP. Hmm. And um, so, e so basically it means that the, f the page or the folio can either work with buffer heads or with IOMAP. And that is a problem for the block device because, well, as it so happens, surprisingly enough, every file system is running on top of a block device. Hmm. And if that block device is using buffer heads, well, the file system better use buffer heads too. Otherwise, there might be, you might get interesting results, like very nice kernel crashes. Mm -hmm. And so the mix and match approach is something oh, uh, hmm, needs to be considered carefully. And the other one is that, well, UFI obviously requires a FAT file system. So, if you want to switch off buffer heads, you wouldn't have a FAT file system, so booting um, UFI machines will be very tricky. And of course, review will be hard, because you need to spot all the dependencies on the page size, or the implicit dependencies on the page size, like an increment by one if you enumerate pages. Hmm. So, and then again, why do we do that? Is it really worth it? Well, I think it is. 
but that's just me. So the one thing which I, which I know for a fact is that data sets, uh, databases really want to do larger IOs, so they definitely would be benef uh, benefit from it. And the hope is that we're getting more efficient I.O. because in most cases, file systems already will be submitting larger I.O.s. I mean, Butterfest go is going through a lot of pain to ensure that always large I.O. is being sent, and XFS similarly. And of course, we would make the driver vendors happy because they, uh, the drives they make can be more efficient or cheaper. So, is there anything? which I did, or is it just talk? Well, I had been happily coding away and basically had been finished my patch set as one is wont to do last week, when suddenly Louis Chamberlain popped up and sent a patch set. Oh, here's a patch set converting everything to a large block. Oh, thank you very much. You could have talked to me. So as I said, so I'm not work I do not work for, for something I have nothing to do with their work, and this, what I'm presenting here, is entirely my work and no, one's el no one else's work. And um, so, of course, I will be talking to Luis and his colleagues to join both our, um, our approaches to come up with a, final, uh, with a combined patch set. But yeah, isn't open source great? Just when you think you're done, someone else did the very same thing and faster than you. <laughs> All right, just the way it is. So. Anyway, what did I do there? So I figured that if we m were to move the buffer heads off from assuming that it's attached to a page to assume it's attached to a folio, all the underlying concepts would still work. Then the I.O. Uh, onto buffer heads would be still smaller than the attached unit, namely the folio. And we could keep all the accounting, buffer head accounting whatsoever, whatsoever in place because the overall rules won't change. And so also the page, uh, or in this case the folio, would still have a pointer to the buffer head, a single pointer to the buffer head. And um, that would keep the um, number of changes to the buffer hat uh, or the page cache at a minimum. And you, but then mm, you have to, um, uh, to adhere to some certain guidelines when converting. So the problem is that you suddenly um, have different, unit, different units which you carefully need to look at. Namely, the memory management, everything page-wise, every, everything the memory management is working on, it's still going in 4K or page size increments. The buffer, buffer cache will be working on folios, which will be on whichever size the folio had been allocated. And the buffer heads themselves also work on folios, so that's fine. So the buffer heads can do I.O. But the buffer heads actually don't do I.O. The buffer heads, as I just said, are sitting on top of the block layer, on top of struct bio. So what about them? Well, and that's where it's getting ever so iffy, because the, um, the block layer is working on 512 bytes increment by block size, full stop. That's the logical block size for the block layer, and there literally is no way of changing that. That is built in each and everywhere, and no, you don't want to change that. Thank God that is not what's doing I.O., because I always done on the, on the lower level drivers. And the lower level drivers already merge adjacent pages or adjacent bias together to a larger unit. So if you feed them with a larger unit to start with, it will be broken, enumerated in 512 byte units, but the driver themselves will be reassembled into the, into the original folio or the data which is being pointed to by the folio. So, that means there's actually nothing to be done. It should just work. Just work. And it's not really the obvious way, but mm, yeah, seems to be good for now, or should work for now. So, and that's essentially what the final patch set did. Um, of course, there we, I've, one needs to order the page cache to allocate folios and to ensure that everything is really working on folios and really, really is incrementing by 
the size of the folio and not by, by page size. And um, then there's also, we need to transfer the block limits because really the, dri the driver which tells us which size we should be using in the page cache, so we need an interface for that. And that worked quite well, actually too well, because the first patch that I did also used NFS, and it turns out that NFS, to be, well, more efficient, tries to transfer really large chunks, like 128 megs, which surprisingly worked for a certain time. So copy worked for, well, quite a long time until it finally went out of memory, which neatly proved that, well, large blocks leads to a higher, higher memory fragmentation. Hmm. If there was any, uh, was any proof, there it is. So, was that it? Mm, yeah, mm, 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 well, sort of. Because nice that we enabled the Linux kernel to talk to drives with large block sizes, but really there are no drives with large block sizes because no one can talk to them. So, what I did was update the BRD, the block RAM disk driver, to actually display or support large block size so that you have something as uh, some test bit to test it out with. And that proved to be an easy test bit, so it actually worked quite well. And you could even, surprise, surprise, use this as a backing device for, uh, for the NVMe target. And voila, even NVMe could speak uh, with, uh, with large block sizes. So that was quite cool. But of course, there are still, still some testing to be needed, especially this, this splitting and merging in the block layer needs to, do, needs to, be, some, needs to be tested. And uh, yeah, it, it seems to work for my case, but well, wh what am I to say? And of course, yeah, hmm, what else? So, QMO would need to be updated because for QMO it would be quite trivial just to well, support large block sizes. In theory, again, um, you would need to just need to modify the drivers to display or to um, announce large block sizes. Just. I haven't looked at it, so um, as, as usual. In theory, everything's easy, but then looking at the code and knowing QMO, it will probably splatter all over the case, all over the code, so hmm, I'm not sure. And yeah, you would need to exercise the drivers with them, and you could test with other subsystems. And yeah, the other one is that you, I would need to unify the patch set with that one from Samsung, but um, chances are that I'll be speaking to Luis ne next week, and the hope is that we'll be able to merge both of them. And of course, there are the usual reviews and fallouts and everything. So, and then there's the issue of the memory fragmentation, which will be a real issue once we move to larger block sizes. I guess it should be okay if we're just talking about 16K, but still, um, the problem is that the memory management continues to, uh, to run on pages. So any internal allocation, which will probably still be done on pages, which means that we will be having enhanced memory fragmentation there. We could maybe move away from that if we switch the entire system to just allocate with the block size. But that assumes that you have the block size. If you have several drives, each with different block sizes, it doesn't really work again. Hmm. One possible thing is, um, which might be worth doing anyway, is to update slop, meaning the, um, the, uh, the, malloc, uh, the memory allocator, to run on higher, or, higher orders folio than just the page size. And obviously convert each and everyone who's using alloc page to just use slop. That would get rid of the internal allocation. And with that, I hope, that it might be possible to reduce the memory fragmentation up to the point that you can do away with that altogether because you will all, all, always allocate in folio size increments. But then you still haven't solved the problem, what do you do if you have several drives, each with a different block, a block size? So hmm, for that, I really don't have a good idea. And of course, I'm open to other ideas if someone has ideas.
And of course, I need more testers because that's something which really needs to be tested. And well, and in case you're really bored, there's still the block layer, which, as I said, operates in 512 byte units. And um, so there really is no good way how we could ch how we could change that. Thank God, the data itself is not stored in uh, is not stored in the bio, but rather in the attached structure in the vectorized AO that's called the biovec, which is basically that structure. And for that, it should be possible to well move uh, move the struct page to the well struct folio and just use that, or even have a union which would allow to either access it via the folio or the page, because really the first bits are the same, so you can have a direct, basically you can have a cast from a folio to a page and vice versa. And so that would be possible. Uh, I haven't looked at it, I haven't attempted it. It should be possible, but again, this is for someone really determined to do it, because that is no fun whatsoever. That is basically all over the place. Um, I just checked the struct folio in the block layer is mentioned 10 times, and the biovec is mentioned about 4,000 times. So, hmm, what should possibly go wrong? Yes, and with that, I'm actually done. Hey, it looks far better on the large screen than on my laptop. Okay, fine. And yeah, I did something. All right, good. Anyway, thank you very much, for, and I'm open to questions. Still open to questions. <laughs> All right, so um, you can always find me later on. I'll be sticking around a bit longer here or up in the lobby and the, in the hallway. Thank you very much for your patience.